So this weed here we call it the spider weed. Spider weed is not just a, a weed but it is edible. The stalk is uh, rough and the leaves too are rough. We eat every we eat almost everything. We eat the seeds of spider weed, we eat the leaves and then we also eat the stalk. It is very delicious. It is bitter to some people who hate bitter greens, but as for me, I love my greens when they are bitter. I, I normally mix my spider weed together with um, my African black nightshade and then my black jack and some senna coffee and I make very sweet greens out of it. These are the pods from the spider weed. These ones are still fresh, but when we normally dry them and we use, to, we use this seeds again to replant other spider weeds. So, Apart from this wheat being edible, I said we eat the leaves and we also eat the stalk. It also has other uses. And the use that we normally dry these leaves and then we use it to make tea which cures scurvy. So you just take the leaves and you dry them. And the good thing is that these dried leaves can stay up to two years. So it is not a worry. Just pluck as many as you can and then you dry them. After drying them, you are going to make your tea. If you, a child is suffering from scurvy, you take the dried ones or even you can turn them into powder form. And you make that tea that is going to cure scurvy. Apart from that, again, the dry leaves and flowers produce edible and medicinal oil. So you take these flowers, these are the flowers of spiderweed, together with the leaves. After you have dried them together, you are going to, we normally squeeze, if you have that machine, you squeeze to get your oil. But if you don't have that machine, what you do, you are going to take the dried flowers and the dried leaves and then you place them in oil. You are, let's say you are using your olive oil. And then you, you cook until you feel is like the leaves appear like the burnt. So you are going to sieve. After sieving, that oil is used for cooking. And again, it is a medicinal oil which is applied on the skin to treat skin. And it can even be taken in very minimal doses to cure dysentery and uh, any related stomach problems. Apart from that, again, roots are normally used. The roots of this spiderweed, you take the roots to treat arthritis, scorpion stings, and fever. So if you are stung with a scorpion, which is very rare, you can apply the juice of the roots of spider plant. If you are having suffering from dysentery or fever, you cook this the roots and you take the tea. If you are suffering from arthritis, you take you take the roots of this spider plant and then you cook the tea and you drink it to cure that. Apart from that, again, this herb is a good mosquito repellent. What you normally do, you take the dried leaves and then you burn them inside the house. They're going to repel away any form of insects, be it mosquitoes or crawling insects. And again, the dried leaves are normally added to jute mallow during weaning for babies. So this is the dried leaves. This is the jute mallow. I'll just show you the jute mallow. Here, this weed here, we call it jute mallow or nalta jute. So we take the dried leaves and we add it here. Or we just take the fresh leaves and we add to jute mallow and then you are going to prepare. Like here now, you, these are the leaves together. You cook and then you blend it to make a puree. That puree you are going to feed to your child during weaning. Apart from that again, <coughs> the leaves, it, oh, it is good for replenishing blood. And that's, you know, normally we call it as meat here in our culture when we are going to Shamba to look for vegetables we, we say I'm going to the butcher to buy meat so if somebody is having your blood count is very low we normally recommend that you are fed on spiderweed leaves or on plus the leaves of jute mallow apart from that again the leaves are mixed with those of brassica carinita or canzera and then we boil them and then we round them into lamps and sun dry them for future use Kanzara is in the group of curls, so we normally, you boil them together, you cook them until they are well cooked, and then you are going to form those balls and you sun dry them. This food is normally, can be stored for up to six months or one year, and it is normally called the famine substitute. Let's say in the time, in the time of drought now, we are going to take our lamps and we just cook them and we consume them as our vegetables. And again, we normally drink the water. When you are boiling this this spider weed, it has that the water that you will get after boiling it after it is well cooked. You normally drink that water to promote blood, to promote blood, to promote. Let me say also not to promote, but to increase our blood count in the body because it is good for boosting for blood for those people who are having low blood. And apart from that, again, that boiled water is used to cure diarrhea, and then. 
when you're having chest pain, you take the root infusion and you apply it, you drink it and also you massage yourself with that that juice to cure you from chest pain. So it is a good herb to a good herb to have a good weed and again it is vegetable and by the way here we cultivate it on large scales for those who are in kenya we normally call it saga so next time you do not just assume this weed buy as much as you can dry them and store them in drought you are going to use them and again it's going to be your medicine